Google Data Studio, if you have not discovered it yet, is an incredibly cool way to create an aggregate of the data that other Google platforms offer. For instance, Google Search Console and Google Analytics. You can create Google Data Studio dashboards even if you are not a data scientist, which is great for people like me. <laughs> I have worked um, on creating a boilerplate process for replicating Google Data Studio dashboards that help our clients understand what SEO metrics are important to monitor. So I'm going to walk you through a little bit of how we do it and it will give you some ideas. I would really suggest that you start playing in Google Data Studio if you are involved in marketing or SEO in any way. Even if you have a lot of other reporting tools, Google Data Studio can be a really neat way to um, aggregate the information that you're getting and to ensure that you've got kind of like a real-time manifest of how a site is performing. So I'm going to walk you through um, basically how you kind of open a report and, um, and link up all your data sources and then we will look at the SOP that we've created in our company for um, using Google Data Studio in a meaningful way for SEO clients. Okay, so you'll open an untitled report and you'll go in and you will connect a Google Analytics account, which I don't think this one is actually hooked up right now, but we're going to pretend. So we're going to add it like that. Okay. And then you'll add it to the report. And then what that's going to do is over here, it's going to give you the data source. So you're going to be able then to pick the different dimensions and metrics that you want to show from the Google source that you have connected. Okay, now obviously we just did Google Analytics. You should immediately remember that we need also to add Google Search Console. So we're going to go in and we're going to add data again. And then you're going to find GSC. So let's look for Google Search Console. So we're going to search console here. We're going to find the one that we're connected to. I don't think I, yeah, I do have it right there. Okay. And then we're going to do URL. So um, there are a couple different ways to do that. I'm not going to be too concerned about that right now. You can um, investigate that more. So you're going to add that to the report. All right. And then that gives me the secondary option to be able to add data from Google Search Console directly to this. So I would go in and I would add charts and you can see you've got all different kinds of options. You can add tables, scorecards, time series, bar charts, pie charts, Google Maps, all these things, okay? There are going to absolutely be data scientists and purists who are going to think perhaps that there are some very specific ways that you should or should not represent data. Data visualization is obviously a much more complex endeavor than what I'm going to show you today. However, I think that for the layperson and who, who is not a data professional and for somebody who is a client simply looking to understand how their site is performing, some of the simple things that I'm showing you today are actually really helpful and they can give kind of like I said that real-time insight into how a site is performing. I do think if you're going to use Google Data Studio it is really important that you have um, a method to your madness okay because it can get really fun and you can play with all the different things but you want to make sure that you're actually monitoring what matters and you can create these like super elaborate Google Data Studio dashboards that um, you'll never look at so make sure that you keep it co uh, consistent and meaningful um, I will try to turn this into a handout so that you guys can download it but basically what we've done is I've created because I can't stop myself and a little SOP for how we use Google Data Studio for our clients um, and what I've done in here is I've indicated okay this is the um, this is going to be where it displays, okay, so what page it's on, what that page is named, the data source that it comes from, the dimension, the metric, and then the data visualization. So I just talked about this a second ago, but like, for instance, you know, using scorecards for metrics like new users, clicks, average position, impressions. So anything that's really like numerically driven, and it's really more about like the sum total of the performance that month can can use, you know, usually be represented with like a scorecard. Um, because it's simple and you don't really need to see anything that a graph or a chart would indicate to you because it's not really a progressive metric. It's more of like an aggregate or a sum. Um, so we use Google Search Console for clicks. We do use a time series chart um, and then we use comparisons. So just like when you're, you know, actually working in Google Search Console or Google Analytics and you're using, you know, those comparisons, um, you can do the same thing here and then you can represent it on the chart. Um, and then we use, yeah, we look at countries, so there's some maps, um, the device category and users, we use a pie chart and some other things like that. And then you're able to report directly on things like SEO keywords. So tables and tables with heat maps, I assure you, I'll show you all this in a second. 
um, is a really good way to kind of, I think, represent that. And then acquisition channels. Um, I will quickly mention to you that you can go in and there are some third party tools that you can use to link up um, some of these platforms. So like meta properties like Instagram and Facebook, um, YouTube obviously is a Google property. And then some of these others, if you want to kind of put all of your um all of your data together in one place, but it's obviously likely that you've got, you know, some extra ways to do that, but you can't even go through and do like your CRM and some other things like that. So, you know, point being, this could function as like a primary reporting tool for an organization if you wanted it to, just with a little bit of extra setup. Okay, so let's look at what it looks like in the real world. So basically that's the way that we go through and set it up and to, you know, to my earlier point, I do think it's important to have a plan for that because again, it's it can be really fun, but you know, it needs to be really as useful as possible. So I will go in and show you an example of one that's been set up. So we always have just an, you know, a single page kind of at the front to make sure that clients are aware of kind of how we created it and then how to navigate through this. And then these are the scorecards that I mentioned to you. Okay, so you can go in, we'll go into the edit function so you can just kind of see, but basically we go in and you can see average position. So I would have gone to add that. I would have gone to add chart, scorecard, okay? And then I would go collect. So I would say, okay, the metric, I want it to be a average position. And then I didn't need any other data on here, but I could have added it, okay? And then note that that's the setup of the actual data itself. And then you can go into the style and you can set the color, you can set the orientation of the text, you can set the background, all that. So there is actually some design elements here. Um, I don't care too much about that, but you know, if you do, then you can really, you can customize it pretty nicely. Um, so this is the same thing. I went, went into add chart and went into a um, time series chart. Okay, just like indicated in the SOP. And then I picked the date as the dimension. So keep in mind the data source, okay? And then the date as the dimension and then what the metric is was URL clicks. Um, the default date range I did as custom. So, you know, as with most Google tools, it'll give you like some default date ranges. You wanna go in and set the very specific date range that you're interested in assessing to make sure that you're seeing the right set of data. All right, same thing here. So these are just scorecards that kind of tell us some of the basic, you know, things of the website. Part of the reason that I went through and spent so much time creating this document that helps us set it up is just because there are mixed sources. Some things come from Google Search Console, some things come from Google Analytics, as you already know. And so I always just want to make sure that I'm super clear on kind of where I'm going to harvest that data from so that the setup of these is really easy. Um, but there are, you know, there are metrics within GSC and GA that I feel like should be together, right? So like channels and users and clicks or key phrases or, you know, things like that. So I just want to make sure like part of the benefit and, you know, one of the, one of the objections sometimes to tools like this is that, okay, well then I don't need anybody to do it for me. If you just set it up, then it's like set it and forget it, right? And I don't need an expert to look at it and I don't need a retainer and I don't need an SEO person on my team. The problem is there's a great deal of interpretation that needs to take place when you're doing something like this because you need somebody who can't who sees beyond the numbers to the story. Like what story does this actually tell us about how people are behaving on our website? What story does this actually tell us about like what of our SEO work is effective and what is not um, and things like that. So it's very important that there is an interpretive element applied even when you have something as robust and beautiful as this. Making sure that you're always paying attention and looking at it yourself as a human and investigating what you think you see. All right, so then this has um, the pages on the website, right? That's driving URL clicks and a beautiful pie chart. I think, let me look in here, yeah. So you can go through, and I just wanna show you the customizable elements. You can go through and change like the background of that, the font, um, the how the data is presented. So by percentage label or value, some things like that, okay. And then you can manage the dimension value colors if you want to customize that as well. So that's just helpful to kind of say like, okay, here's what's driving most traffic to our site. Um, and I think that a pie chart is a really nice visualization of that. And then the last is queries. So if you remember from my SOP, that's kind of the part here that we have, you know, client name, SEO key phrases. So we're pulling a couple of different versions of metrics um, related to key phrase distribution and what's driving traffic to the site. As you probably already know, like we want to always know the difference between non-branded and branded key phrases um, and what's driving traffic. We want to know what has actually driven clicks. Okay. And then we also want to know positions. So those are obviously things that you would 
always look at. Um, these are tables with heat maps. So I'm just going to show you one more time. So you've seen it three times, but you basically go and add chart. And then you have three different table options. You've got table, table with bars, or table with heat map. Um, I like heat map just because it's colorful and it helps call attention to the multidimensional reality of this data. So that's, you know, one thing that can be tricky when you're doing data visualization for SEO because, like I mentioned before with GSC and GA, they've got different, you've got different data streams, you've got different sources, you've got different metrics. How do you compare users versus views versus clicks, right? Things like that. Part of a tool like this, I think part of the value of a tool like this is that you can be instructional. You can help clients and you can walk through whether it's for your own website or for a client's website. You can walk them through what all of that means and what is the difference between all of those things and then what do we care about and what do we not care about? What are we measuring? What's important to us? Um, because obviously that directly relates to justifying the ROI of an SEO investment that justifies, you know, that helps map your KPIs and keeping track on the progress that you're supposed to be seeing. So that is that. I want to show you one more thing um, because we were actually able to use Google Data Studio last year in end of year reporting in a way that I think was pretty cool. I quick clicked over to this. Um, what we were able to do is basically we pulled and, and collected throughout the course of the year, every single month, we would add one of four key metrics that we felt like were kind of comprehensive snapshots of SEO performance. Um, as you probably have already discovered, if you're in SEO at all, like year over year trends are really important to understand. Knowing how a website is going to perform with the ebbs and flows builds some predictability into your reporting. So you're not like, oh, my word, we, fall, we fell off the map in, you know, April and May. It's like, oh, well, we knew we would right? Because that's an annual trend, um, that kind of thing. So what this does is it basically like fills in the blanks for every single month of the year, um, showing the highest performing months, the lowest performing months, but comparing the same metrics across the board. So like every click of the month, every impression, I mean of the year, every average position and every URL click through rate. So just creating that kind of big picture um, is one of the ways that you can build value into a a Google Data Studio interface like this and use the dashboard for more purposes than just kind of a monthly report or a real-time data poll. Try it out. Just go to Google Data Studio, plug in your Google Analytics, plug in your Google Search Console and start playing. That's how I figured it out, right? I just Googled it. I probably watched videos like this and like just started like playing around with it, um, nerded out for a few hours and I had it down. So I think that that's really helpful. I will try to um, link this Google Data Studio setup somewhere on a landing page on our website so that you can download it yourself. But um, this is a really powerful tool. It's super fun. It's a way to familiarize yourself better with the data and it's a way to communicate data in a really visual and grabby way. Good luck.